Hi, I'm Elizabeth Smith, and today I'm going to show you three different methods I use for winding yarn. If you purchase yarn that comes in a skein or hank that looks like this, it needs to be wound into a ball or cake before you knit or crochet with it. So let me uncoil the twist that this is in so you can take a look. So as you can see, the yarn is one big loop and usually there is a strand or a label like over here that is securing the loop in this formation. And you're gonna see over the three different methods that I'm gonna show you for winding that the key is really to keep this big loop in the same formation as you wind the yarn. So let me show you those three different methods right now. The first method of winding yarn that I'm gonna show you is on a ball winder in Swift. This is usually the setup that you see at a yarn shop. You can also purchase your own ball winder in Swift. It's a bit of an investment, um, but it is the fastest way to wind yarn. The other two methods I'm gonna show you don't require an investment at all, um, but this tends to be my preferred way um, because it is fast and it also uh, creates really pretty yarn cakes as you'll see in my example. Um, and that also allows you to pull from both the outside or the inside of the skein when you're knitting with it. So let me show you how to wind yarn using a Swift and a ball winder. So I'm set up here with my Swift and I also have my ball winder. So the Swift is already secured to the table. Um, it has a clamp. Um, there's also a clamp on the ball winder. This is probably the trickiest part is finding a table that is um, narrow enough because often these ball winders, it doesn't come, the clamp doesn't come too far down. Um, we swap tables here because this table works for this particular ball winder. Um, sometimes you might find like a bar stool or something like that, that might work as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp my ball winder. It has this blue dial here, and that's how you tighten it. So you just wanna make sure that both your Swift as well as your ball winder are nice and tight onto the table or surface that you have it attached to. And I'm gonna make sure the same goes for my Swift. Okay, so now I have this all set up. I'm gonna grab a skein. This is some beautiful chunky weight from Manos del Uruguay called Cardo. So the first thing you untwist the, the loop that the yarn was in. So here is our untwisted loop. Now you wanna keep it in the loop formation that it's in. Um, and as I had mentioned before, so you have these strands of yarn as well as maybe the label that are sort of securing this loop in place. That's really important. You just wanna make sure that those are staying in place before you put it on the Swift. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it over my Swift like this. And this is how I like to do it. I like to then hold the loop like this with one hand. And then you have this mechanism here. This is actually what helps to open up the Swift. So it's gonna open like an umbrella. So first you wanna make sure that this knob here is loose. And then you're going to move it up. And as you can see, it starts to open just like an umbrella. And as it does, now the loop is on there. So once I, it's in a nice secure formation, I take the knob here and I tighten it. And that's what keeps the, the umbrella part open. Okay. So we have the swift part now set up. Now this is when I'm going to actually snip the little strands of yarn that were keeping that loop in the formation. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the first one here. And what I do is I try to like pull it out a little bit just to make sure I don't snip the actual yarn. You want to find where the actual knot and often they have um, a little knot. Now this one I didn't even have to snip. I just sort of pulled it and it sort of came undone. If that doesn't happen. You just take your scissors and just snip it. And I'll show you on the next one. So in this skein, it looks like there's just one more. So see how this is the label and I'm sort of pulling it up and I can see here's the knot. So that's where I'm gonna snip. So I'm just gonna take my scissors 
and snip it right there. And you sort of just undo it and then I will snip the label off. Now every yarn manufacturer is a little bit different. So just take a look of, of how it's sort of put together um, and make sure that you're not sort of snipping the actual yarn, that you're always snipping where you see an actual knot. And now one of them always, so that particular one was the beginning and the end of the skein. So see how it's sort of freed up right here. That's one of the ends. And then if I look underneath, I can see here is my other end. So that you're going to take one of those. Oh, actually, before I do that, I just noticed I have one more to snip over here. That will often happen. So again, so I see that it's a knot right there. So I will just snip as close to the knot as possible. That frees it up. So as you can see, it's just a little strand of yarn. Okay. And then I go around and I just make sure that it's not uh, twisted, that all the strands seem to be going in the same direction, which it is. Then I'm going to take one of my free ends and this is the part where we're going to attach it to the ball winder. So the first step, you see this, there's this silver piece that has like a bit of a coil. The goal is that you want this yarn to go through the coil. So you put it through both of the loops in the coil. So now you can see it's sort of going directly through it. Then you're going to take your yarn and there's usually a little slit on the top of your ball winder and you're just going to place it on there. Now I find that it often won't stay there. As you could just see, it just flew right off of there. So what I like to do once you have it through the coil, I put it through there and then I actually just wind the yarn a couple of times around it, just like that. And that helps to secure it in place. Then you can start winding the yarn. So you're gonna take the crank handle that you have on the ball winder and just make sure that you start going in the same particular direction. So you don't wanna just swap it. So if I'm going in this direction, I don't wanna stop it and then start going in the other direction because uh, that will start to unwind it. So just make sure you're going in the same direction. Often I like to use my left hand just to sort of guide the yarn a little bit. I don't like to go too, too fast with it. Um, I try to keep a medium pace going. If you start hearing a creaking noise on the ball winder, um, that can sometimes mean that you're going a little too fast and it's just getting caught. The squeaky noise that you hear right now is totally normal. My ball winder and Swift are a good 10 years old, so that might be part of the squeaking noise, but each device might be a little bit different. Okay, so we are almost done winding. It just finished, and there we go. Now we have this lovely cake, as they call it, on the ball winder. When you're taking it out, what I like to do is just secure my fingers underneath the cake as I push it off. So I'm using my thumbs kind of in the center area and then I just pull it off just like that. And then we have this beautiful cake. And then what I like to do for the outer strand here is I just like to wind it around it and then I will just sort of secure it under some strands just like that. Then the other thing that I tend to like to do is I'll take the label I used to do this all the time when I worked at a yarn shop. I'll fold it and then I'll stick it in the center. And that way um, I always know what yarn this is, especially if I'm winding a bunch of skeins at one time. Now the next two methods I'm gonna show you involve hand winding. The first one is utilizing two chairs. And let me show you how that works. Here is the other method I use for winding yarn and that is utilizing two chairs. So as you can see here, I have two chair backs that are close, that are facing each other, just like this. I'm going to take my skein of yarn. I'm going to uncoil it, but just like on the ball winder and swift before I cut any of the strands that are keeping the loop in its formation, I'm going to put it 
on both of the backs of the chairs, just like this. Then, kind of still holding the loop a little bit with both of my hands, I'm going to push the chair backs away a little bit, just so that the loop stays upright, just like this. Sometimes I like to push it a little bit. I want it to be pretty taut. There we go, just like that. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut those strands. And this is a different yarn company. This is Barocco Mercado. You can see they use different strands than the Manos yarn. So it's almost like embroidery thread that they use. So I'm gonna cut that. Okay, making sure, just like when we use the Swift, making sure it's all going in the same direction. Often it helps to sort of push it down a little bit too. And then I'm gonna find my end here, which is right here. I'm just gonna snip the knot off just like that. Okay, so here's my end. Now my chairs are a little bit wobbly, so you're gonna see a little wobbling going on, but you'll still get the point. Let me move my chair up. Okay, so I'm going to take my end and I'm going to wrap it around my three or four fingers on one hand, just like this. And then I'm just gonna go around and start winding it onto my fingers. And then once I have a little bit, here's how much I have, I'm gonna pull it off of my fingers and then I'm just gonna start winding it on itself so that I start to create a ball. And so I will just go around and around like this. And sometimes I like to just make sure I keep pushing this down a little bit. I might need to move the chair in just a tad. There we go. So as you can see, by utilizing the two chair backs, you're keeping the skein in that loop formation. And that way things don't get tangled and it allows you to handball just like this. So I'll just keep going around and around. And as you can see, I have my little ball forming and I'll keep going like this and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. And before I completely finish, I just wanted to show you one more thing. We only have a few more strands here to wrap. If let's say you only have one chair, you could totally do this with just one chair as well. I'm just going to push this chair out of the way. And as you can see, I'm just having the yarn. You're not gonna be able to see because it's out of the camera, but you could just let it drop and you could just be winding around that one chair back, just like this as well. So just wanted to show you that as another option in case you only had one uh, backed chair. And as you can see, I have now hand wound this into a nice ball here. So the last method is similar to the chair method, uh, but I actually utilize my knees instead of a chair. Let me show you what I mean. So another method I use is around the knees. Now normally I'd be doing this, let's say on my couch with my ottoman or on a recliner. So this is a little bit different, but you'll get the general idea. So if I am in a recliner or on my ottoman and you're sort of sitting with your knees up like this, you can take your skein of yarn and put it around your knees. So your knees kind of act like the chair backs in our previous example. Then I'm just gonna take my scissors and just like we did before, making sure that I'm not cutting any of these until I've secured the loop. So my legs are acting as, as the thing that's securing the loop in its formation. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do my snipping here. Okay, so I've snipped my ends and I now take one of the open ends. And this is a good example of, um, you know, I see both of my ends are right here, but they're sort of twisted in there. So first I wanna make sure that I sort of untwist. And again, you just wanna make sure that you keep that loop in its 
formation. And then I'm gonna take one of the ends and sort of find it, bring it to the outside. Here we go. So sometimes you just have to guide it through a little bit to, to sort of untangle it from the inside. So I've just done that. And just like I did with the chair back, I start by just winding it around four fingers or so on one hand and going around. And then once I have a little bit on my hands, on my fingers, I take it off and then I start to just create the ball. So this is the way that I'll often do when I'm watching TV at night and um, I would just want to wind my yarn while I'm continuing my movie or something like this. Now the idea though is the same in that you're just keeping that loop in its same formation. So, you know, if you have a child or spouse or roommate that wouldn't mind, um, you know, you could also take this loop and they can hold it like this and you can wind the same way. Um, but if you don't and you only have yourself, you could always just utilize your knees. So I'll just go around and around like this. Okay, I am just about done. It looks like a couple of the strands kind of got a little tangled, but that's fine. You're already at the end. So you just start winding like this. And there we go. We have our, our yarn all wound up into a ball. So those are the three methods that I use for winding yarn. There are lots of other methods out there. So if you Google the topic, you'll find, uh, you'll find lots of other options out there. But I hope that seeing how I personally wind my yarn helps you figure out what might work best for you.